Welcome back. This is lesson 18.5. We've been learning about search algorithms. In this final lesson, I'll look at some variations on the way that we write the binary search. We'll look at writing the binary search using iteration. That's the method we've learned already. Using recursion and an alternative method using markers instead of slicing the list. The binary search that we've learnt so far involves finding the midpoint, slicing the list in half, taking the upper or the lower slice and repeating this process until we have a list of length one. At this point, you've either found your item or it's not in the list at all. There are three main ways of writing the binary search. Slicing it using iteration, slicing it using recursion or using start and stop markers and not slicing at all. So let's quickly look at those three methods. Why bother to learn these other methods? Well, for one thing, it makes you more versatile as a programmer, if you know many ways of doing the same thing. The other reason is that the method that we've learned that uses slicing obviously destroys the list. We got round that by passing the list as a parameter, which in Python means a copy of the list. But in some other languages, you might not be able to do that. And it's a good idea to learn methods where you don't have to slice up the list. And of course, if you're an A-level student, any of these methods could come up in the exam. So I think it's quite important to know all the different ways of doing the binary search. The way that we've learned is using a while loop and we keep slicing the list while it has more than one item. So here's the iterative binary search function. We call it iterative because it uses a while loop, which is an iterative structure. And when the loop is completed, we compare the remaining value in the list to the target value and we return the value of this Boolean expression to the main program. Now let's try and do the same thing using recursion. We've already had some lessons on recursion. Remember, a recursive function is a search function that calls itself. In order to turn an iterative function into a recursive function, we have to answer three questions. What is the base case that stops the recursion? What is the recursive part, the line, usually the last line of the, of the function that calls itself? And what are the other commands that go in between those two uh, parts of the recursive function? So let's work through that slowly. First of all, we have to think of the base case. Our recursion, like our iteration, will stop when the list has been cut down to one element. So let's write that as a base case. I'll bring up the code in a moment. See if you can follow along doing this yourself. So I'm writing a recursive binary search and um, the list is called array here and the search term is called target. So if the length of the array is only one, we compare that one remaining item to the target and return that value. So that is the base case of the binary search. We've reduced the list to a single item and we compare that single item to the target. That's a Boolean expression and we return the value of that expression to the main program. So if you haven't done so already, write that base case. Now we have to add the recursive final line to the function. So in the recursive part, we'll find the name of the function. And remember, we have to pass the, the list or array and the target value as parameters. So at the bottom of your binary search function as that line. I'll show you in a second. So that would be the final line of your recursive function. The word return, the name of the function and the two parameters. 
Your recursive function is almost done now. Now we have to put all the other lines of code, which we've already written uh, when we were doing the iterative function. So we put in all the other lines of code to find the midpoint, compare the midpoint to the target, slice the list in half and take either the uh, upper or the lower half of the list. So this is really just copy and paste. So see if you can add those those lines to your recursive function. There they are. Find the midpoint and slice the list, taking either the upper or lower half of the list. So here's the complete recursive function with the base case, the recursive section and all the other code. So make sure you've got this uh, written in your as, as a Python program and to try it out with some lists of numbers and check uh, whether it works properly. And finally, in this final section of the lesson, we'll look at how to create a binary search that doesn't slice the list. Instead, we will use two markers to mark the start and stop points of our search. And those markers will get closer and closer together. This means we can avoid slicing the list in half. We do this because in Python, we can send a copy of the list as a parameter. But in some languages, that is not possible or not easy. And therefore, there's a risk that we will damage our original data structure. So instead of slicing the list, we use two markers to mark the limits of our search. And then every time, instead of slicing the list in half, we just move those markers closer and closer together. Eventually, the start and stop markers will both be pointing at the same value, and that will be the value that we're searching for, or it's not in the list at all. So we have to set initial values. We start with the start marker at zero, the very start of the list. And the stop marker is at the very end of the list, which would be the length of the list or array minus one, because numbering starts at zero. And we're going to loop while those two values are different from each other. So there's the Python code to assign those values to those variables and begin the iterative structure. Now we have to find the midpoint between the start and stop values. We can't do this by halving the length of the list because in this new version, the list isn't going to get smaller. So what we'll do is add together the start and stop values and divide by two. Remember, we need to use integer division because what we're trying to find is a, the midpoint of the list and the indexes of a list are always integers. So from those clues, I'm assuming that you can write that code. It's a single line of code and I'll show it you in a moment. So there it is, the midpoint of the list is the start and stop values added together and divided by two. And the result will be a midpoint between the start and stop values. So now, instead of slicing the list in half, we're going to move the markers. So I want you to write the code to do this. We're going to compare the value at the midpoint to the target. If the midpoint value is the same as the target or larger than the target, we need to stop at the midpoint. If the midpoint value is smaller than the target, then we need to start our search at the midpoint plus one. This means that our start and stop markers will mark the section of the list in which our target value is found. So from what I've written on the board there on the screen, 
write that code. I'll show it you in a second. Quite straightforward. If the array at the midpoint is bigger than or equal to the target, stop at the midpoint. Otherwise, start at the midpoint plus one. Remember that these commands are inside a loop. So every time the loop repeats, the start and stop markers are getting closer and closer together. Eventually, they will both point to the same item in the list. At this point, the loop will stop and we can compare the value to the target and return the result of this comparison. So we do that with a single line. We return the result of comparing the value at the stop marker with the target. You could just as easily use the start marker because they're both pointing to the same thing. So this line will tell you if you have found your search item or not. So here's the completed binary search function using start and stop markers instead of slicing the list. If you haven't written this down already, stop the video and copy this in your own Python uh, work area. So this lesson, we've looked at three ways of writing the binary search using iteration, using recursion and using markers instead of slicing the list. OK, so I'll leave you with the task of writing the three versions of the binary search value. And in the next lesson, we'll start looking at how we can analyze and compare the efficiency of different algorithms. So bye for now.